hay mucho que hacer. Yo he hecho mucho. Ay, eh. Hola, mi gente hermosa. Welcome back to Lingo Mastery Spanish. This is Maria, your Spanish teacher. And in today's video, I'm going to break down the verb haber for you. The reason why this verb can be confusing is that you probably don't have an haber in your language. So let's go ahead and make it as clear as possible. There are three scenarios in which you're going to see the verb haber in action. The first one is to express in personal sentences. Also, to express obligation. And the third use is as an auxiliary verb. So let's start with in personal sentences. In this context, the most accurate translation or the equivalent of haber in English would be there is or there are. So we use haber in situations we would use there is or there are in English. We use it in the third person singular. Hay, hay. Remember that the H in Spanish is mute. Let's see some examples. Hay mucho que disfrutar en la vida. Hay mucho que disfrutar en la vida. There is a lot to enjoy in life. Hay demasiada gente aquí. Vámonos. There are too many people here. Let's go. Hay cosas más importantes en la vida. Hay cosas más importantes en la vida. There are more important things in life. No hay tiempo. No hay tiempo. There is no time. Hay días de días. Hay días de días. There are days from days. That's the translation. This is an expression that we use when we have one of those days in which things simply don't go as expected. Hay comida en la nevera. Hay comida en la nevera. There is food in the fridge. Thank God. Hay <laughs> is in the present tense. But if we want to express an impersonal sentence of a situation that took place in the past, then we're looking for the word había which is the conjugation of the third person singular of the verb haber in the past and we're still talking about impersonal sentences. Naturally, it would be equivalent to there was, there were. Había demasiada gente, por eso nos fuimos. There were too many people, that's why we left. No había leche, tuve que comprar. No había leche, tuve que comprar. There was no milk. I had to buy it. Había nubes negras en el cielo. Yo pensé que iba a llover. There were black clouds in the sky. I thought it was going to rain. No había gente conocida en la fiesta. There were not people we knew at the party. Había suficiente café para todos. Había suficiente café para todos. There was enough coffee for everyone. Había vacas en el camino. Había vacas en el camino. There were cows in the way. So, we use hay instead of there is, there are, and we use había instead of there was and there were. Now, there is something important so important that I'm about to explain to you and I want you to give me all your attention right now. Look at me. Había is in the pretérito imperfecto, the Spanish imperfect tense. And as you could see for all those examples I just gave you, there was no particular start or ending. We know these things happened in the past because we we're using a verb in the past. Había. But I want you to go back and notice I never said when these things took place. And also they were descriptive. There is another way in which you're going to see a bed conjugated and it's hubo. Hubo is in the pretérito indefinido, the Spanish preterite tense. And we use this tense and in this case hubo when we want to talk about something that had a specific start and end in the past. For example, hubo dos fiestas anoche. Hubo dos fiestas anoche. There were two parties last night. There were two parties that started and ended last night. So that's why we used hubo. Ayer hubo un accidente por mi casa. 
ayer hubo un accidente por mi casa. There was an accident near my house yesterday. Aquí hubo una clase de yoga el fin de semana pasado. Aquí hubo una clase de yoga el fin de semana pasado. There was a yoga class here last weekend. Also, notice that all those examples were events. And that's one of the scenarios in which you use the preterite tense for events, talking about events in the past. The second use we're going to go over for the verb haber is to express obligation. There is something that needs to be done. And these sentences are kind of impersonal too. We express that something must be done, but we're not saying we have to do it or you have to do it. Though the sentence in this context do have that collective sense, like it's implicit, it's gotta be done for we, but it's not said. So let's see some examples. Hay que cuidar el planeta. Hay que cuidar el planeta. I will use two translations for this sentence to see if you can better understand where I'm going with this. This could be like, we must take care of the planet, but I'm not saying we at any point, and the planet needs to be taken care of. Am I being clear? <laughs> Your wife comes in the house and you're relaxing watching Netflix and she goes like, Hay que limpiar la casa. Hay que limpiar la casa. The house needs to be clean. Or the house must be clean. It's implicit that it must be cleaned by you both. But she's not saying that. <laughs> Hay que pensar antes de hablar. Hay que pensar antes de hablar. We need to think before we talk, and it's kind of like a general rule. Hay que agradecer todos los días. Hay que agradecer todos los días. We need to express gratitude every day. But I never said we on the sentence. It was implicit that it was for we, but it's not said on the sentence. Hay que amarnos los unos a los otros. We must love each other, but I never said we. <laughs> and of course, in this context, you would use había and hubo as it corresponds with the previous, like with the previous explanation. Había que limpiar todas las habitaciones. Había que limpiar todas las habitaciones. All the rooms needed to be cleaned. Hubo que alquilar 20 sillas para el evento de ayer. Hubo que alquilar 20 sillas para el evento de ayer. We had to rent 20 chairs for yesterday's event. Keep in mind, I'm trying to do the translations as accurate as possible, but they're not literal translations. Miss Maria, we know Spanish is a different language with a different structure. <laughs> and the final use for haber for today is going to be as an auxiliary verb. This one is different than the other two, and that's why I left it for the end. Forget about I, había, u. Let's learn how to conjugate haber with personal pronouns. Yo, he, tú, has, él, ella, o usted, a, nosotros, hemos, vosotros, habéis, ellos, ellas, o ustedes, han. And in the past, yo, había, tú, habías, él, ella o usted había, nosotros o nosotras habíamos, vosotros o vosotras habíais, ellos, ellas o ustedes habían. Which tense is that? This is the past participle, and we use the verb haber to support the main verb in the past participle. Let's see this sentence. I have eaten at this place so many times. I have eaten at this place so many times. Notice that the main verb of this sentence is to eat, but to express what we want to express with this sentence, we use some help from the verb to have, which is also a verb, but it's not the main verb of this sentence. That's what makes it an auxiliary verb. And this is what happens in Spanish with the verb haber. The translation to the sentence we just saw is yo o 
sin yo. He comido en este lugar muchas veces. He comido o yo he comido en este lugar muchas veces. Same with the rest of the persons. ¿Has comido en este lugar? Have you eaten at that place? He pasado por muchas cosas. I've been through so much. Ella había dicho eso antes. She had said that before. Past tense. And in this context, as an auxiliary verb, you will always see, always see, había, always, no hubo in this context. He conocido muy buenas personas este año. I've met really good people this year. Hemos caminado un montón. We have walked a lot. The use of the verb haber is exactly as you used to have in English. And I think that makes it simple to understand, doesn't it? And now let's see a short story in which we're going to see all the uses in action in context. Esta mañana hubo una caminata en la montaña y fui con unos amigos. Yo no había estado ahí antes. Era hermoso. Estaba muy feliz porque había distintas especies de plantas y animales. Había árboles altos y flores coloridas. Conecté mucho con la naturaleza, especialmente con las vacas. Hay que dejar de comer animales. Pensé, bueno, algún día. And let's wrap up with a recap. We use the verb haber to express impersonal sentences in which you would use there is and there are in English. In the past, we use había for descriptions and things that took place at some non-specific day in the past. And hubo for events and things that had a specific start and end in the past. We use haber to express the collective need of doing something, express obligation or general rules. We use haber as an auxiliary verb in the past participle like you would use to have in English. And that's it for today. I hope you guys found this useful. I personally think I crushed it on this one. I'm really proud of this lesson. So if you think so too, hit the like button, leave a comment down below and share it so it gets to more confused Spanish students. Don't forget to subscribe for more. We upload videos every Tuesday. Nos vemos entonces, chaito.